Welcome to section 38 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Campylobacter jejuni, which you can see right here. This scene will take place back during World War II on the island of Iwo Jima. Recall from history that a major battle between the Japanese and the Americans took place on this island. So we've shown an American soldier at the top of the hill with a pistol pointed at this Japanese martial arts guy. The martial arts guy is actually attempting to use jujitsu on the American as he extends out his fist and knocks away the gun. Anyway, Jujitsu sounds like jejuni, which should help you remember that this image is all about Campylobacter jejuni. All right, notice that we've shown the sky extra pink, which is to help you remember that this is a gram-negative organism. Also, take a close look at the American's mustache. Notice how it curves up at the ends? Well, this is to help you remember that Campylobacter jejuni is a curved bacillus. So curved mustache for curved bacilli. This is a gram stain of Campylobacter. Notice that the organisms appear red or pink, which is why it's gram-negative, and also notice that they are curved appearing. So Campylobacter jejuni is a gram-negative curved bacillus. All right, now notice that we've shown the Japanese guy with a blue necklace on. For this soldier, the blue necklace is an honorable decoration that indicates that he's highly decorated and well-versed in the ways of martial arts. Anyway, just like in our other videos, this is here to help you remember that Campylobacter is oxidase positive. This is an image of the oxidase test, which we covered in more detail in section 20, which is our Neisseria overview video. Recall that if the organism is oxidase positive, then the disc will turn a blue or purple color, which is what we can see on the left right here. So remember, Campylobacter is oxidase positive. All right, now notice that we've shown a guy towards the bottom of the hill who appears to have stepped in some poop. We'll be using this as a symbol for fecal oral transmission. So Campylobacter exhibits fecal oral transmission. Next, notice that we've added some American soldiers attempting to place a flag at the top of the hill. We took this idea from that iconic scene from the actual battle of Iwo Jima. Just so we're all on the same page, this is the image I'm referring to. Anyway, just like in our other videos, the flag is here to help you remember that Campylobacter is a flagellated organism, which also means that it's modal. Now notice that we've added an airplane flying overhead. You can see that it just dropped a bomb on the ground, and now there is a massive hot explosion. This explosion is here to help you remember that Campylobacter is unique because it grows at 42 degrees Celsius, which is higher than many other organisms. So hot explosion for grows at 42 degrees Celsius. If you look closely at the airplane, we've shown a pig decoration on the side of the body. Let's zoom up so you can see this better. The Japanese pilot flying this airplane is an ace, meaning he has shot down many enemy aircraft during prior aerial engagements. So the ace's military leaders decided to paint a pig symbol on the side of his plane as a way of striking fear into all of the American fighter pilots. Now every time someone is shot down by him, they'll know by his pig symbol that he's the Japanese ace. Anyway, this pig symbol on the side of the plane is here to help you remember that pigs are reservoirs for Campylobacter. Now if you turn your attention back to the jujitsu guy, you can see that we've added a dog to the scene. This is actually an American dog that is attempting to disable the Japanese guy. Look at that dog biting him. Ouch. Anyway, just like the pig, the dog is here to help you remember that puppies are reservoirs for Campylobacter. Next, notice that we've shown a stray cat climbing the hill. The cat is here to help you remember that cats are also reservoirs. Finally, notice that we've shown a guy sitting on this blanket. Let's zoom up on him. As you can see, he's enjoying some raw meat and a glass of milk. I guess he's celebrating the American victory, perhaps a little prematurely. Anyway, the raw meat and pork in the image should help you remember that Campylobacter is also transmitted through the ingestion of undercooked meat and unpasteurized milk. Remember that bomb that went off? Well, it appears to have done quite a bit of damage as you can probably tell by all of the people getting blown up. Now we can see some bloody remains around the explosion. In any case, the blood is here to help you remember that Campylobacter causes bloody diarrhea. All right, now notice that we've shown several other Green Berets climbing the hill to put up that flag. As you can see, as they go up, they get progressively fatigued. Look at that guy near the top on all fours and out of breath. Anyway, Green Beret sounds like Guillaume Beret. So that's why we've shown these soldiers here. Also, the fact that they're getting more and more tired as they climb the hill should make you think of ascending paralysis. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that Campylobacter is associated with Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is an immune-mediated condition that occurs due to molecular mimicry. We talked about this idea in our strep pyogenes video, and the process is similar here. Ultimately, this results in ascending paralysis that begins in the lower extremities and progresses upward. Finally, notice that we've shown a girl furiously writing down some information next to the guy with the camera. These two are here to document this victory and are the ones responsible for that masterful picture I showed earlier of the American troops putting up the flag. Anyway, just like in our other videos, the person writing is here to help you remember writer syndrome. So Campylobacter is associated with writer syndrome, 
which is also known as reactive arthritis. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A six-year-old girl is brought to the physician due to bloody diarrhea that was first noticed yesterday. She has no significant past medical history and has not traveled recently. A stool culture reveals gram-negative curved bacilli that are oxidase positive. The causal organism is most likely transmitted through which of the following? A, contaminated water, B, sheep, C, sexual contact, D, pigs, or E, respiratory droplets. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this girl has bloody diarrhea and a stool culture revealed gram-negative curved bacilli that are oxidase positive. Together, this information is enough to be certain that the causal organism is Campylobacter jejuni. So the correct answer must be D, pigs. From the image, recall that the pig on the airplane right here should help you remember that Campylobacter can be transmitted through pigs. If we return to the question, you should have recognized that there are only two organisms that should have been on the top of your differential, Campylobacter jejuni and Vibrio cholerae. Both of these are gram-negative curved bacilli that are oxidase positive and can cause diarrhea. However, Vibrio is more common in resource poor countries and is associated with a watery diarrhea, not a bloody diarrhea. Vibrio is also transmitted through contaminated water. So with this in mind, A is incorrect. B is a reference to Bacillus anthracis. Recall that this is also known as wool sorters disease. However, this doesn't present with bloody diarrhea. So B is incorrect. C is incorrect because sexual contact is not typically associated with bloody diarrhea. Finally, E is a reference to many organisms, but the most likely organism that may be associated with aerosolized respiratory droplets and can cause diarrhea is Legionella. However, Legionella doesn't typically cause bloody diarrhea and is not a curved bacillus, so E is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is D, pigs. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Campylobacter jejuni.